Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone. Today I'm here at Fort Park and we're heading into the brand new maze trailers for a behind the scenes tour. Let's go. So this year, Fort Park are offering two behind the scenes tours, one of which covers trailers, the brand new maze, and the other covers Creek Freak Massacre and Platform 15. Now these packages cost 50 pound per person and can be booked via the Fort Park website or on the app. Now, in today's video, we're of course heading into trailers to give you guys a sneak peek of that behind the scenes tour. And we're lucky enough to be meeting up with one of the lead creators of this maze, Steph Ricketts. Let's go inside and go and see her. Now, normally you would start your behind the scenes tour over in containment, where Kieran and myself obviously filmed a load of promo stuff for this year's Fright Night. But today we're jumping straight into the action here in the Super Spark Cinema, which you're of course very familiar with, Steph. <laughs> um, so yeah, what have you got to show us in this first room? But there is so <laughs> much, there is so much in this first room. Um, but first off, um, thank you for coming down. Obviously you are in the lobby to Super Spark Cinema, um, which has opened for Fright Night's uh, 20 Years of Fear. So um, I think the first thing to start off with this attraction is that this was very much a passion project for so many people, um, whether they've been part of Fright Night's for a couple of years or whether they were part of it decades ago, literally decades. <laughs> Um, everyone from all across our history pulled together to make this attraction work so I think that's a really lovely thing. So this project's been going on for at least six months now so we started looking at this back in April and we started looking at the lineup like we always do with Fright Nights yeah. and we look at what what do we want to achieve for this year. Obviously we all knew it was the 20 years of fear and it was a birthday year so what was what was the birthday piece really um, and we discussed a couple of ideas and a few of us were really passionate about bringing our history back into the park um, but not in a way that it wasn't compelling for brand new guests to come and see we wanted guests who had never been to front us before to have a piece of that birthday experience as well we started this back in april and this idea of how can we get some of our best scenes and our best mazes back but without just bringing them back because it's really hard to do that yeah. we then looked at how do we collate all of these ideas together and these best bits of Fright Nights um, in a way that's enjoyable for everyone. So we started going down two avenues um, and originally we weren't looking at this building, we were looking at containers uh, and obviously containers have a certain look and feel to them. Okay. So how do we portray our greatest hits or the story that we want to you know, pinch bits of our greatest hits from? how do we put that in a maze, basically, yeah. that is for, for everyone. So we had to think of the look and feel of containers. So we had two avenues. We had uh, a movie studio uh, avenue, nice. or we had a cinema avenue. Um, and that you know majorly depended on the building, the look and the feel outside, what could we achieve? Um, there was no point in you know trying to make a cinema um, if we couldn't make it look like a cinema from outside and yeah. the same with a movie studio when you go through a movie studio you think of giant um, you know director's chair and big film sets and backlog big tours buildings, yeah. yeah yeah so we had to think of those things so we also looked at cantina area as a location for this attraction okay um, so where the big tops been and like do or die previously yeah so oh. a key fright nights area that we've had in the past yeah. um, so we looked at two different avenues movie studio and a cinema avenue. You. Oh, um, wow. And there was two different routes and obviously where our location was going to be kind of depicted on what avenue we could go down. Yeah. Obviously we could have done both in this building, we could have done movie and we could have done cinema, um, but certainly with containers we might not have been able to portray cinema as well as we've been able to do in this yeah. building. So those decisions and those parts of the project kind of shift you in a way that your attraction's gonna go naturally. Um, so back in April, May, even June time, we were trying to find a location still and what was best for the park and the map and where does the traffic go? All of those things, um, you know, were, were considered when and we considered this. We had jungle escape here we had at jungle that escape point. Here, so. so yeah, so, um, so the decision was made uh, to come back into this building, you know, it started off, a Fright Night started off here for the freezer and wow. everyone remembers here for the asylum and then Studio 13 of course, um, and it's taken a brief hiatus from the Fright Night sign up to be a jungle. Um, so we then took away the movie studio and James from Marketing was very passionate about how can we bring a <laughs> cinema to life at Thorpe Park Resort. Um, and then we had our cinema version um, and then we started to flesh that one out and started to go down, okay, what are our greatest parts from Fright Nights? Um, we can't talk about all of our IPs necessarily because of license yeah. but how can we take um, 
uh, influence from them and what are some of the best scenes and how can we bring that into a Fright Nights attraction so people will know that's a nod to it yeah. but it's not necessarily the same scenes or the same brand or anything like that so we went down with a cinema version and Super Spark Cinema was born. Um, so the concept is that you go around the cinema, um, you're here for a Halloween marathon because cinemas have been closed for the last 18 months. Yeah. So yeah. it's set very much in current times, um, but it's just branded to the 90s because it hasn't had a refurb since 1994. <laughs> so the original trailer was set in like late 80s um, when the cinema was meant to open, yeah. as you guys will know. <laughs> um, and then uh, it hasn't had a refurb since the 90s. So the look and feel were really passionate you had to have the arcade carpet nice, you had yeah. to have <laughs> you had to have you know the the massive popcorn machine you had to have all of those things that just was so nostalgic but is so timeless now and then you go around uh, to see various different films which are based off of our greatest hits um some of our when we say greatest hits some hits might not have been the greatest at the time but they they definitely deserve a place in our lineup um so, so that's where the concept was born of super spark cinema um, and how you go around the cinema and you end up being part of, of the world that you know you go to see. So we called it trailers um, because you see the best bits um, and you also get to walk through the trailers. So when we go around, or for anyone who's been already, you'll see that the rooms are very sharp, very intense, so you get the best bits and you walk yeah. away going, oh my God, I want to get some, <laughs> I want some more, and that's what a trailer does. Um, another project name that we had for this was Hangar, or The Hangar. Okay. Um, so like a backlot tour, do you go on a giant hangar oh, or a giant yeah. set and you get to be part of the trailers. Um, and we even toyed with the character of the director making a return as well from 20 Years of Fear, but we just felt as a park that we wanted something brand new, something yeah. that we could build on. Um, and the director represented a very much an older era of Fright Nights, yeah. so Lionsgate, movie studios, and if we weren't doing movie studios, then does the director belong in the movie studios? So we can make nods to him, but this is very much a new world that we wanted to create. So um, you go to the cinema, the projectionist has, you know, is, is shoddy with his work um, and he opens up a portal um, that allows you as a guest to step inside and experience the trailers um, for, you know, straight in front of you. Um, and then you get to go around and experience all of those. Um, and then you end up coming back into the cinema, into reality, but not as all as it seems because some of the monsters have escaped now. Um, and that's where it was born really. So. Um, the pre-show script in here, you are greeted by an usher, they talk about you know the backstory I've just explained to you, um, and in the script there are at least 12 Easter eggs to previous mazes um, or to previous um, you know previous inspirations that have led us to the yeah. films that are in Super Spark. So um, they'll say things such as um, the popcorn machine is being a nightmare. Yeah, see, even, I didn't even notice this the first did time, you not? but when I was editing, I was yeah. like. Pick it up on all these little yep. things, yeah. Uh, even zombies wouldn't eat that. This uh, this uh, cinema's cursed. Oh, the cinema's cursed. It's hell here sometimes. So we've brought up things such as Hellgate, the curse. The projectionist has been here for seven years. Um, nice, there's yeah. loads of different ones, and I literally stood in this room writing it. Imagine an hour sitting here going, "How can I get all of these in?" Um, but the first film that you go and see is Beyond the Chair here, um, which is an inspiration um, from four different. Um, uh, mazes uh, that we've had at Fright Nights before. So Beyond the Chair is uh, a nod to Saw, to Containment, to Experiment 10 and to Asylum. Wow. So they're all like <laughs> bunched together. Um, and the line that they say um, is a psychological thriller about a backstreet surgeon who contains his patients in his personal asylum. And then nice. they say, I saw it last week because <laughs> of Saw. So it's all, it's all in there, even though at the time you might not believe it, um, but it's meant to be effortless as well. Yeah. So if you pick up on it, you'll be like, ah, oh, it's clever. And then if you just turn here, we do have our trophy trophies cabinet. over here. Have we got any we do indeed. hidden Easter eggs over here? There are many Easter eggs <laughs> in this one. Um, so these were really fun to make. So um, the director, obviously, as we mentioned, yeah. was meant, you know, was potentially going to be in this attraction. So. Um, best film director, the director, he's quite a narcissistic character, so of course he's gonna have his own award. Um, best inspirational film, we put the freezer because that's where everything started. Where started. Best film soundtrack, Bozo's Play Zone. With the big top yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, big top course, soundtrack. Yeah. Best experimental <laughs> film, Vulcan Voodoo. That, I think that says it all. Um, and then we have some of our Scarecon awards, um, various and other these, trophies. These are like actual awards. Yeah, yeah, so this one here as well. Of... Not all of them are in here. I just kind of grabbed them and put them in, you know, for our home in here. Um, we've got the motel down here as well. So best film in production because the motel Studio 13, was from Studio course, 13. Yeah. Um, and then we've got another Easter egg to uh, one of our non 
long serving actors, Chris, uh, <laughs> who also helped build the attraction as well. So um, we he was part of Unlocked Vision, who helped build, but they were the brains behind bringing this together. So Seven Jade, they took our vision and they made it into what it is today, which is there amazing. So yeah, so loads of different nods here. We also got the uh, the tape, yep, the that, tape. Uh, obviously Kieran designed yep. and used for all of the marketing stuff. Twenty years of fear. It's so great to see. so yeah, so loads of Easter eggs in here, um, and then you've got your Friday Nights merch down there as well. Oh, yes. So. <laughs> It's all tied into the same universe, um, but should we go to, yeah, to let's screen? To let's the, go to screen 20. <laughs> and of course this poster on the right has a lot of sentimental value. Oh this one, yes. Yeah. So this this uh, this was uh, my leaving present, <laughs> uh, which I didn't know about and I opened it up on the stage as everyone was saying goodbye to me uh, and I cried. <laughs> but this is this is my Asylum character, so Asylum was the first attraction I was in as part of Fright Nights. Um, ten years ago ironically, in nice. this very building, um, my character was called Shawnee Doyle, uh, but she was uh, nicknamed Insane, so her nickname in the Asylum was called Sid and she'd just run around. Um, so so yeah, so that, that was a nice little surprise from the team for me. Um, but then we've got other ones that are later on in the yeah. attraction as well um, but yes that one has a home that's very nice in the lobby <laughs> and then you go down here and then you have um, your staff corridor. So the the um, the usher at the start will tell you that unfortunately due to the power guts you can't go through screen 20, but you get to go through the staff corridor. Uh, of course in the staff corridor you have a notice board. Um, so we have loads of different um, people's names who worked really hard on the project. And we have some photographs from the promo here as well that we thought tied in really nicely into yeah. that. So here you've got our show captain, Georgie Glover. She is uh, the duty manager on this board <laughs> and she is here every day. Um, you've then got, um, you know, myself and Katie, assistant manager, you've got um, James here as the box office assistant because he <laughs> brought the Super Spot Cinema to life through branding. Um, and then you've got other people who are part of the project team who... Seven Jade, Seven right Jade, the top. Yeah, 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 they're the managers. Um, so yeah, so you've got a lot of people um, here um, who worked really hard on bringing this to life. And then you have our employee of the month, who is actually one of our actors in the one attraction. The actors. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. And then you come into screen 20, so this is where you would sit and have your film. So you're brought into here, but before you get to sit down and have your film, there is a power cut and the usher explains to you, unfortunately, um, they've been experiencing power cuts. Um, you experience another one and as they go to figure out what they can do, that's when they become hypnotized and they become part of the frequency of the Super Spark cinema. So they are essentially charged by the electricity, nice. they become part of it, they end up being hypnotized and opening up the portal for guests and sending them straight through the trailers where straight they get to the experience it. So yes, yeah, so they get to walk through the screen and we were really passionate about this being a wow moment. Not many places do you walk through a screen. Yeah. Um, so it, it's great to see that this has come, you know, come to fruitation because every room we try to think of, okay, what's the wow moment in this room? What is it in this in, in screen 20? What is it in screen 21, which we'll go to later? But the whole gag was that you walk through the screen, yeah. otherwise you don't get the whole, you don't get the essence of walking into something. Um, you, you are then just a, a spectator instead yeah. of a participant. You're going, yeah, yeah. into the experience. You go into it, so yeah, so yeah. And then you go through into the first film, which is obviously Beyond the Chair, um, which is the one that you have booked to see at the front yeah. anyway. So if we head this way, we'll go straight through Beyond the Chair. So as you can see, as soon as you come into it, you are sucked straight into the world oh, of Beyond yeah. the Chair. Um, and the first thing that you see <laughs> is the old asylum sign. So. Um, I did walk across the park with this in a blanket so no one could see it. Um, but this is from, whether this is the original I don't know, but this was in the last version of Asylum in 2013 oh, wow. and it's just been stored since then. Um, again, has a lot of sentimental feelings. So Jim, who is our production team leader, myself and Georgie, who's the show captain, all started in this building in the Asylum in different wow. years. Um, so yeah, again, sentimental in the fact it's the first thing you see yeah. as you come around the corner. But I wanted people to be excited as soon as they came around and saw this as well. Um, I know this was originally hanging, well, after the asylum, it yeah. moved to the Ents office, right? Yes, it was. And yeah. then I know myself and Kieran kind of stole it <laughs> for the promo did. stuff. And then Ents stole it back yeah, and stole put it, it back, in the So here it is, back in the building that very cool to see, you know, was here. Um, so, yeah, so you have that and then you come around here. And then again, this is beyond the chair. Lots of nods to the attractions that I say. So, um, Saw, Containment, Asylum, and Experiment 10. So, one of the things that we had in Asylum in 2011 was a cutout of the chainsaw. So, 
it's like that has to absolutely be in there because That's you have cool. a nod of somewhere on park uh, the chainsaw is about um, and then this <laughs> mirror is influenced from the washroom in Saw Alive which is the best room to act in it's so good <laughs> it's just just pure basic impact scaring yeah. um, and one of the best things was being at this mirror and standing there and seeing the guests come through and they not know you're there you could just turn around and impact scare them and just it's parted um, so so that's a nod to Saw the tiles, um, the dentist chair, all from containment. Um, the the tile and the you know the work around the corner is very much a nod from Asylum. Um, and again, X10 patient bringing those themes back into yeah, it. Nice. So it's a very it's very much a different concept, but you can tell where the influences yeah. have come from. Um, this piece is from Live a Nightmare. Mad. So, yeah. so we're just going to borrow the repurpose. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. It's good stuff. So you know yeah, we want to put it in, and this is very much an you know. Easter egg attraction oh, as yeah. well, so put it back in the Easter egg place. Even um, with um, the big top, I remember there was a chainsaw missing yeah, as well, yeah. so it's kind of... So it's keeping the themes yeah. going. Um, so then you come around here, you've got your lab coats hung up again, and nod to Experiment 10 and Asylum, come through here, and this is a great space for actors to work. So when designing this attraction, Unlock Vision uh, and Thought Park was really passionate about how can we make this, you know, um, accessible for the actors. One thing in the past we've had um, that has maybe not gone so well is when we build attractions but don't think of the actors' runs and the actors' routes and how can you get from one room to the other. Yeah. And this attraction you cannot, absolutely <laughs> not cross-contaminate because all the different characters. <laughs> yeah. And Georgie has been absolutely stellar making sure that that doesn't, you know, that's not a thing and yeah. that the standard's always, you know, hot and that everyone is clear on where they need to be and the routes that they take. So you'll never see a clown in You'll never see room. a clown in here and if you do, then <laughs> we're in trouble. Wrong. Something's gone wrong, but no, she, she's been amazing at making sure that standards are kept to a high level, yeah. but equally, the corners aren't cut, literally. Yeah. Um, so actors, again, in this room, you have two characters, a, uh, a dentist and a patient, and they have all this space to run around. And again, you can cut through here back to nice, the original yeah. room. So you can scare the same group of guests about four or five times if you work this space really well, which the guys have been doing. Like every time I've done a walk through here, they are literally like sweating, but having <laughs> the, having just like the most fun. Yeah. Um, they absolutely love it, which is amazing to see. So yeah, um, this table again, um, it's from previous Fright Nights attractions. Um, we've taken inspiration from containment again. So yeah, so this is beyond the chair. We wanted the first room to be really strong. As soon as you come in, you get you know hit with a really strong impact scare and a really classic Fright Nights theme. Um, and yeah, and then you leave beyond the chair and go to go into your next trailer. I have to say, I really like how this maze has these kind of like intermission the transitions. Rooms. Yeah, it gives you a chance to, <laughs> to, to like relax. breathe. <laughs> and obviously, you've got the posters. Yeah, um, so. This actually, the posters were actually one of the first things we knew, or you know, I was really passionate about putting the attraction was posters. I didn't know anything else about the attraction or what else should be in there, but I was like, the posters have to be in there, guys. Um, just to, again, like you said, reset. Yeah. So you come out of the attraction and, you know, uh, Katie, my, my boss, in, you know, when helping build this was like, it's really key that people see this yeah. before you go into the next room because people will then understand, oh, this is what I'm going into. And yeah. it's that anticipation of, I hate clowns. clowns. I'm just oh, about boy. to go and see that. Um, so yeah, so the cinema screen numbers are nods to the years. Very cool Easter egg that yep. is, so very cool. Uh, you know, 2015 was the original Big Top and then 15 Years of Fear was then when it got reinvented and put into the cantina area. So Bozo's play zone, again, Big Top was just a giant play zone. Um, and Bozo was one of the characters that we had in 2015, Rome with the Carnival of Fear. Okay. So that name was quite iconic back then. Nice. And it's Big Top without saying it's Big yeah. Top. We know we can't, you know, we wasn't trying to recreate the big top, but yeah. if anything, the brand is so strong that we were like, okay, what are the best bits from yeah. the big top? We've got the soundtrack yes. and everything. So you go into here, and then you go into Madame Mephisto's tent. So everyone knows that Big Top started with the tent and yep. then you went into the purple drapery and you walk through and you had this mystical, you know, crystal ball moment. And then you went through into the uh, play zone, essentially. So you then come around here and these colors are so iconic for the Big Top. Oh, yes. Everyone knows and these posters, all of, there's Madame Mephisto. These uh, posters here have nods to previous managers, which, you know, they were printed back at the time that yeah. they were current in the lineup. <laughs> but yes, so, um, we thought put them back in, they're yeah. part of history. And then you come around here, and then you go into the fun house. So one thing we wanted to do with this version was 
take away the blood a little bit. We wanted throughout the attraction to go quite dark and light. Okay. So with Beyond the Chair, it's very dark and dingy and gritty. Yeah. Then in here, it's really bright. Complete and then yeah, yeah, and then as you go through, you'll literally go like this with a colour palette. So it just brings different emotions and different feelings throughout. So this was really bright. And you'll notice with the costumes this year, there's barely any blood over them. It's all yeah. bright, chaotic, really high energy, um, quite intense. The guys are literally running around here, making sure that they scare everyone and that they're noticed and they're popping up in all the boxes. And yeah, this is just a giant play zone really. Yeah. Um, but yes, these lights, obviously they're not on at the moment, but these lights will flash as well. And you have the Big Top soundtrack in yeah. here. So this is very much a, you know, an homage to the Big Top, but without it being the Big Top, um, but taking very strong inspiration. Yeah. I've got to ask Steph, otherwise my viewers will kill me. <laughs> Something very interesting, obviously, right here. Maybe, maybe that should be an Easter egg we don't talk about. Maybe, we, maybe we'll just leave that one. Very um, funny. But I know it's caused a lot of hype. <laughs> um, so yes, you then come round here again. Playtime, fun house. The fun house um, lettering is quite iconic yeah. in the big top. It's something that I personally remember. And then you go around here, and then you take another <laughs> another piece of inspiration from the big top. Which is the Biff Baffs, yes. which were part of it from 2016, 2017, which, which Johnny was really passionate about <laughs> putting in. Obviously, you know Johnny. Um, so, yeah, so again, the colours, um, blue and white, again, referencing old photographs. I was like, they have to be blue and white. <laughs> um, and yeah, again, just a giant fun house, yeah. really. Like when you go to a giant play zone or fun house or, you know, a wacky warehouse that you have like, um, ball pits and um, biff baths and slides and that's what we wanted this area to be we wanted it to be fun but with clowns so yeah. something really sinister with something really fun um, but just take out the blood but it's, it's, it's done really you know it just proves that you don't always need blood yeah. to scare people <laughs> um, and then you come out of the big top and into another transition which is called hell cell so this uh, this room had another name before it was Hell Cell, which was Satan's Pit. Okay. Um, but we just reworked it. It's a nod to Hellgate into the passing, which is why number twelve, number 12. Is, is the screen number. So yes, this is very much gritty prison bars, basically prison in hell. Um, <laughs> so again, taking a snippet for the trailer, taking the most intense bits. In this room, you meet um, a prison guard and prison inmates, who are all in red boiler suits. All nods to you know being in hell and fire and um, you know just bringing that aggressiveness back to scare acting yeah so you go to here so there are two cells and guests here do get to be split up so they get to be taken every time you come round here it might be a different flow or it might be a different experience especially in this room sometimes you might just walk through and see a scene being reenacted sometimes you might be part of the scene yeah. and you might get put in a cage <laughs> and your friends go off and then you're left on, you're your, left own. on your own um, but we wanted to bring that it into this room especially it happened in the passing it happened in do or die it happened in experiment 10 so we wanted to bring that into this room yeah so yeah and in both cages mm -hmm. i'm right in thinking there's kind of access to actor yep. corridors behind so that one um so in the middle of the attraction is a spine okay. so the actors can access every single room again no cross contaminating but yeah. you can literally get from one room to the next room and then this is a actors run through to the big top. big top so again you can't really go through it but in terms of an emergency room and all you know all those kind of necessities in a building you have access to yeah. out um but they also have chains and bang plates in here that they can make really loud noises with which also scare people <laughs> this is like old school scare acting to yeah. me i started in screw with madame two swords this brings up a little bit of that as well um but yeah this is just smoky prison guards inmates loud noises loud intimidating yeah. Um, there's just some buzzwords for you that that, you know, <laughs> that sum up this room basically. Yeah. So we've gone from having beyond the chair, which is really gritty, to bright and colourful big top, and then you're back in the you know yeah. the depths of darkness and red lighting and smoke and haze and yeah. Very cool. Cool. And then if we go through here, and this room was meant to be uh, a little bit further on okay. in the in the um, layout. So seven dolls. So again, this is quite a small room compared to some of the others. One but of the scariest. <laughs> but still <laughs> just has, has just as much impact. Um, so this is seven dolls. As you can see up here, we have the first of all facades. Yeah. Um, that again, Jade and Seb uh, are not vision delivered last year. So 
they were uh, very passionate about putting them back in because it's a nod to First of All in their previous work. Um, but also Seven, we had the Seven attraction as well. Yeah. So um, people hate dolls. <laughs> people hate that you know that they're creepy and that they just move at any moment. So again, this was meant to bring a different colour palette, monochrome, greys, blacks, whites, no blood, no yeah. bright colours, no greens, no reds, no blues. This was just about being quite... Um, a monochrome palette yeah. and this was meant to be later on in the layout but due to layouts changing throughout the build it was decided that this one should be put here so you'll come through this room and you see that there are um, well it's called seven dolls and you'll see that you have some of them here but not all of them so you know some of them might move and some of them might not um, so again I've seen people come through this room and, and refuse, to, uh, go and refuse to go any further <laughs> and they've been absolutely fine in all the others yeah. where people are like climbing and jumping at them um, but you go through this one and people literally freeze <laughs> and, and or they have someone in front of them and they're it's pushing them so through it's so creepy and it's cool how yeah. you go from the very intense kind of hell cell yep. into this quite still mm -hmm. and creepy room. And creepy and that, yeah. again that was the uh, you know the essence of the attraction that we wanted to create was that you don't know what's coming next yeah. you don't get bored of it you don't buy into the rhythm of it because you know something new is around the corner every room is yeah, different every room is different and unlock vision when they looked at the sound their sound designer had to really think of how does he create the sound for various rooms because as you can see we're in a building so some yeah. of the rooms are roofed <laughs> obviously ones like the big top are roofed because of the soundtrack is very very different but he had to think of how does he design the sounds or the soundscape that might bleed into about another room. Into room yeah, yeah so that was a big thing that they had to consider and he's done an excellent job about doing that again with our smell pods we've had to think of smells that would seep across a few rooms that would be okay yeah. we couldn't have vomit in one and you know shipwrecked in another um, because they would just blend and wouldn't make <laughs> sense so you know no cross-contamination anywhere <laughs> in this attraction um, so yes yeah, so this is seven dolls Again, we've got a nice little uh, actor access yep. over here. Yep. Just to sick things like that that mm -hmm. I love seeing in mazes. Like, yep. It's so cool how they're all built. Yep. And all the costumes as well were made in-house um, by Jim and Georgia. So Jim and Georgia sat there and you know, have, have made handmade a lot of the costumes and the props and the yeah. masks that you'll see throughout this attraction. So they've done an amazing job as well of all the other stuff on park that you see as well. They haven't just had this attraction to focus on. So they've done an incredible job at doing, you know, creating all of that from yeah. hand as well. And it's not just something you buy offline. Well, you're right to just see this, the kind of spine yeah, yeah. of the maze. Yeah, of course. So this is uh, the actor corridor that Steph was talking about. It's so weird to see. Um, I suppose on a normal night you'll have people kind of ducking in yes, and out you would. and You'd have people. it's very busy when it it's is, in operation. It is quite busy but everyone knows the, the ways that they need to go, yeah. um, everyone knows what room they should be in. The whole point of having these access points is to allow our actors to pop out and scare people more than once and it just helps them. Yeah. You know, you're, you're trying to deliver a performance in a couple of seconds through a snapshot yeah. and you have to give it 110% every single time that guest comes around because you know that's the only time maybe that they're ever going to come around yeah. so they will literally like I said earlier be tripping <laughs> but again with the utmost love for their job um, because because they want to give a good performance every single time yeah. so yeah so that's the that's the actor's corridor very cool very cool and then we go into 2018, Vulcan, Vulcan Peak. Um, so yeah, a nod to Vulcan Peak. Um, I obviously wasn't here during the time of Vulcan Peak, <laughs> um, but I hear, have heard many, many things about <laughs> it. And it is part of our history. It so, is. you know, with without, um, you know, your dips, you wouldn't learn what, what your highs are. So Vulcan Peak 100% deserves a place <laughs> in here. Um, but then if you think about Blair Witch and Roots of Evil and that, um, you know, cursed you know cursed witch in the woods vibe yeah. um we have had a lot of that in the past so again this was about capturing that all in one and placing it in one room and then if you come through here you will see that we have had a nod to jungle escape and i'm a celebrity <laughs> which used to reside in here so again um this is you know a nod to vulcan peak but it's called vulcan voodoo so you have two characters in here um sometimes sometimes you might just have one character um but you have a witch and you have a victim so someone who has been you know possessed by the witch or she's casting um her spell or they're casting their spell um and yeah they have a little sequence in here so when we came through the other night you can't you cannot see the witch oh, it's crazy it's yeah. crazy their costume is is amazing their costume is like a top hat with a veil yeah. um drapery and beads and they just disappear <laughs> into the foliage so 
you know, you get scared every single time. I know this room off the back of my hand, and still I come in going, where, where, who's the witch today? Um, I, I remember during like the construction and filming, myself and Kieran would come through here and be excited, but we weren't expecting too much from it. Yeah. And then the first time we did it in like show mode, mm -hmm. it was terrifying, because yeah. this is so dark, and yeah. you don't know where they're coming from. No, and um, this is a nod as well to the pendulum bed in oh, Saw. Wow. So yeah, obviously yeah. in that scene you would have someone or on, on a bed or a yeah. table who then get up and do a scare. So that's a nod to that as well. Um, but yeah, this room is small, but you get some great scares oh, it's, in this it's one. It's simple, but yeah. it really hits. Yeah, yeah, it's very effective. And then you come through here. And then you go to, it's called Ship Happens, but it's a nod to the curse. Yes. So another fan favorite of our Fright Nights lineup. So again, screen eight, because of 2008. Um, and this wasn't in our original lineup. This was something that Unlocked Vision proposed okay. to us. Um, Seb used to be a technician here back 10, <laughs> 11 years ago, and he used to work on the curse. So it was a room that they proposed and it was, you know, it's been built um, and it's, it's fantastic. So if you come through here. And I feel like a really fun fact, weird fact about this one is this is one of the only ones with a raised floor. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because you come up a slight ramp yep. and coming into this one. And then you come into, as you know, in oh, trailers, yes. ship happens, but it is very much, I'd say this and you know, Bozo's Play Zone are the two that we've taken inspiration from previous mazes and just plonked them in. Yeah. Whereas the others have got a mash of Seven with Fierce, we'll put that together and vice versa. So um, this is very much a snippet from The Curse um, and it's great. Uh, yeah, it's just... Very, just beautiful room yeah, this one this with the lighting. Amazing. It looks yeah. um, like it genuinely is underwater. Mm -hmm. Awesome themed ceiling as well. Yep. Yeah, really cool room this one. Yeah, this is this is great. Um, again, piece of acting equipment for them to have some scares with. Obviously, the curse was was netting. You're on a ship, um, so yeah, the actors can utilise this and to really work this space. And they've been doing that as well. Um, again, the other night when I came through, they they scared a group behind me or one that had caught up about three times in the space of like <laughs> ten seconds. Do they just know how to work the space? So um, that's credit to them. Um, and yeah, this is this is I, I just love this room. It's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then our next one is another one of my favourite rooms. One. This one. I so love it. one that might not be as well known as some of our other attractions. This was never an attraction. This was our roaming team of 2014, hence why it's screen 14, called The Night Terrors. So this was a, it was my first year being a team leader in entertainment and these characters were created called The Night Terrors based off of a marketing shoot that that took place for hotel entertainment. So we took inspiration from that makeup and created these characters and they were a group of, well, they're a group of night terrors really that walk around in black boiler suits and you know, uh, black gloves and they all had a different weapon each one of them had a baseball bat one of them had a, a noose one of them had a teddy um, which was quite iconic um, there was one who had a plastic bag so they just just appeared in the you know the you know the depths of the night um, and we called it stains because obviously like we're, we're based near stains um, so yeah so this was um, I love things such as uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Poltergeist and you know those those bits of horror movies really terrify people because it's when you go to sleep, it's when you uh, close your eyes, it's not your typical slasher where someone's chasing you or you have an aggressor after you. Yeah. These are things or creatures you can't control. So you then go in, you then go into the bedroom, which is where the night terrors appear. So this room is one of my favorites. It's I'm, so cool. Oh, I say that about every room. <laughs> um, you come into here um, and essentially this is, this is a, you know, a bed scare where you have a victim in here and a night terror. Um, and you know, the, the story in this is that the victim goes to sleep or shuts their eyes and the night terror just appears. So you can never shut your eyes. It's, you know, um, it's quite haunting. So the actors absolutely you know, crawl out of this bed, some, you know, to scare people. They're crawling on the floor, but the the characters are meant to be, you know, cre like quite um, quite creature like. They're yeah. supposed to slide and morph, and I'd imagine them to be up in that corner over there, like a spider. Yeah. Um, and in their rehearsals, you know, Georgie, Emily, and Lewis, who run the rehearsals, 
um, absolutely made sure that they got, you know, the actors to understand how to move like a creature and use their physicality and keep their stamina up and all those kind of things that you need as a scare actor to make a room like this work. So we do have a lightning storm over here that takes place and again something that our Not Vision were passionate about was making sure that the lightning storm happens from the window, nice, not yeah. over the room because the lightning storm's not in the room. Not indoors, it's yeah. not indoors, so it's from the window. Um, so there's loads of different scares in here. Um, there's loads of nods to people as well. So this is such a cool room. I this love is it. a spandex. So this picture moves. So again, um, these are our entity teams. So this is Harry, this is Georgia who makes our costumes. This is Emily, the one of the entertainment experience managers. Um, this is one of the shoots that we did for Amity High. And if an actor is just going down the corridor, they can put their hand through. So this will move as well. So again, the wall moves as the night terrors move. You don't yeah. know where they are. Um, and then you've got the bed scare here as well. Um, and then you have um, other posters as well here. Um, again, all of these posters are a nod to our previous attractions. So cool. Um, and we purchased these way back for Studio 13 in the finale run out. Um, and that's where they're from. Yeah. So these have been around for a good couple of years, <laughs> but why not put them back in? They're part of Studio 13. Um, and again, the, the walls were meant to be as if the night terrors are seeping down from the ceiling yeah. as well. So if we could in an art, if this was a film, you'd imagine the night terrors crawling from the ceiling yeah. or crawling out like spiders. Um, and then you have your TV gag over here. So again, they can crawl out to the TV, they can come from the window, they can come from under the bed, they can literally come it's from anywhere. It's a crazy room. It's a crazy room. I so really this bed like literally just opens up. Yep. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you have some other nods in here. So you've got um, your Fright Nights cast hoodie, which is something that we get every year at the end of Fright Nights for our teams, which means that they get to take a piece of Fright Nights home with them. Um, and then obviously, see the <laughs> your the hands up there. Managed to finesse that in here. <laughs> um, but this is the Night Terror's bedroom. And um, you do have access to this piece as well. Um, so again, the Night Terror can crawl from the window. Um, and this is just where the lightning storm takes place. And obviously you've got the moon here as well. Um, and I suppose you've got access to the uh, TV from here as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, you've got access to the TV. So yeah, this room is just, there's so much in this room. Yeah, yeah. it's and crazy. You, with it you never time. know where you're going to get nope. got from. No. Nope. And then you come through, break out at Brainsbury's, um, which is an idea when we were coming up with the rooms or like, what are these, you know, rough key concepts that we want to put in trailers before we knew it was going to be cinema, um, was well, we need to do zombies somehow. Maybe, you know, a nod to Cabin in the Woods, but also without saying it's Cabin in the Woods, but also the Walking Dead brand is such a strong piece of our lineup. So 17, again, is the year that Live a Nightmare and Sanctum opened up. Um, but we were sitting there having a meeting and I said, you know, I think zombies should be something really, you know, really familiar or something really jarring that you wouldn't, you know, normally see zombies in. And my manager at the time, Katie, went, oh, you know, like a supermarket or something. And Emily and I looked <laughs> up and were like, Yes, that, that is what it is going to be. So um, we came up with the concept. Um, I said Brainsbury's because it sounds like Sainsbury's and it just ended up being it. Um, so break out of Brainsbury's. So the zombies, um, again, if this was a film, I'd imagine this is where the breakout has happened. Yeah. Like no one outside of Brainsbury's knows of the breakout. They think, you know, life is normal. I'd imagine someone doing their trolley going up to a zombie here going, sorry, can you just move out the way? I need my carrots or something like that. Um, yeah, and this is this is the final room that or the final trailer that you're in. So again, you've got your um, you've got your freezer or fridge here. You then have carrot with a smiley face oh here. <laughs> you then have your Brainsbury's branding. So as uh, Sainsbury's and Tesco's <laughs> and all those you know big supermarket chains have their basic value packaging. You know Brainsbury's has theirs as well. So. James came up with a concept that it's called dead cheap. dead cheap. And I said as a joke, or you know, or it would be really funny if you put if you put a bird at the end of it, it's not going cheap anymore. And it's now dead cheap. <laughs> so again, <laughs> another Easter egg. Um, but all of all of this is great. So beans and brains and vegan brains, like how can you get vegan brains? But you can. Um, you know, you've got your Ola Cola here. Um, but yeah, this is a nod to like zombies uh, and an outbreak basically. So yeah. here will be someone dressed in a cashier outfit because they've, you know, they've been at work for the day and they've turned. <laughs> someone in a dressing gown who's gone to get their milk for the morning tea and has turned into a zombie. Um, you've then got your little, over here, your little Halloween, um, your little Halloween stall over here. Oh yeah. So yeah, so you've got that. Um, and then this little broom. Uh, was we found that um, in Tesco's getting our lunch one morning. I was like, it needs to have a place in Brainsbury, so it did. Um, but yeah, it's you know, 
this attraction opens at Halloween and you know why not put a you know little <laughs> Halloween stall in it it's you know it's in every shop um, and then this is the last trailer that you're in and then you kind of excuse the terminology but get spat back out into the real world, the real world. into the real world so you'll then leave you'll then leave uh, Brainsbury's or you'll leave that trailer and you'll come back through out of the screen. Out of the screen and you're in a different screen. You start your journey in screen 20, but then you get kind of spat out back at screen 21. So keeping the theme of um, including the year number in our attraction's name, um, obviously we don't have that in trailers, but you have your screen number 20 for 20 years of fear. Yeah. So for experiment 10, that was 10 years of fear, studio 13, 13 years of fear, and platform 15, 15 years of fear. <laughs> so as you can see, the trend's gone on. Um, and then you leave at screen 21. So, um, you know, 2021. But then when you put it together, screen 20 and screen 2021. 2021. Very nice. So that's why your screens in the middle, um, we had that creative license to brand them or, you know, to number them, all the numbers that are related to their attractions yeah. because it would never make sense to go from screen 20 to 21 yeah. because you would never fit all, you, you can't go 21, 22, <laughs> yeah, 23 yeah. anyway. So we just um, we just thought, well, we'll just play with it. So you then come through here. In the in the journey, guess now, if you get spat out of here, and I know when uh, when Kieran was designing like the visual for yep. this uh, projector, he's hidden loads of like old loads mazes of on there. And I didn't even know that until <laughs> so I walked through and I was like, there they are. So yeah, you kind of get, you know, pushed back out into the real world, but equally some of the characters or the monsters from those trailers have also escaped as well. Um, so again, as you go around, it's quite intense and it's very short lived, but the whole point is that you want people gagging for more. It's yeah. called trailers. You get the best bits in the trailer of a film sometimes. Um, sometimes, you know when you see those films where you watch it and you go, oh, actually the trailer was the best bit, <laughs> which is why you have that line in the pre-show as well. So you then get taken out of here. You then come back into the cinema and obviously you've just come out of screen 21. So yeah, you, need, nice. you need to be told where you've just come out of. So screen 21, break out of brain sprees. And then you head up through here. And then you're back into the cinema, but you'll be greeted by an usher here who is telling you that you know, something's gone wrong, the projectionist is playing around again, um, there's been another power surge and it's let the monsters out, and there was a line that Emily came up with that said you were supposed to enjoy the movies, not join the movies, so that was the essence of what should the finale be, and we spent a long couple of weeks working out what is the finale, because endings of scare mazes are so hard to do, yeah. without a chainsaw <laughs> or like a massive industrial tool, what do you do to achieve you know that scare so we you know we milled over this for a really long time um, and there was so many different versions of how we went through this and what's the ending and do you need like a do you need like a creepy character at the end who has been the villain the whole time and you know that's where the director potentially had a place and okay. we thought well if it's not the director then who is it is when you put a creepy villain at the end, you then have to plant it at the beginning, so yeah. then that changes the narrative. So we went through so many different versions, and there was a picture of me that Emily's taken of me, sat at a computer, going like this, eating a bag of popcorn, <laughs> trying to think of the ending. <laughs> um, but you come back into the lobby, and an usher tells you that there's been another power surge, you should have enjoyed the movies, not joined the movies, and as you went in and experienced the trailers, the monsters came out and have wrecked havoc, and now you need to escape through the only door that is available, which is the fire exit to the projection room. Yeah. So these are the doors that you're supposed to go out of. So the ushers will be put on the knees saying, this is where you're supposed to go, but you need to leave now um, through the projection room. And there's not actually anything on the no, other side. No, there's not actually it's anything. Just it's just completely, you know, as a facade. Um, but again, we've started planting you know, the seeds from the start that the doors don't work, so it makes sense for the ending. Yeah. If you weren't to nod to that of at the course, start, yeah. this would be, oh, why is that not working? Yeah. The doors at the front started working. So from and the get-go... This door here is actually yeah, the other yeah. side of that so door, this door isn't here, it? We'll open Go up straight into where we into, started. Into the lobby. <laughs> so it is a natural door that works, um, but for the purpose of the story, yeah. you have to say from the beginning, and you have to anchor or plant the seeds that the doors don't work. Yeah. Otherwise, if you don't say it, this is just going to fall short. Bit random, yeah. yeah. So your doors don't work, so of course you have to go through. <laughs> the way you don't want to go, which is where all the monsters are, which is the projection room. Yeah. Um, again, you've got two other screens here, so screen 22 and screen 23. Um, you know, nod to that there are other films that are going on and there's other posters here that we don't really nod to, but we'll leave them as Easter eggs. Yeah, we've um, got, uh is that a vampire over there? Tony's teeth. You got Tony's teeth. We've got two teeth <laughs> revenge, teeth revenge. Um, but I won't say too much <laughs> of them. Um, well, uh, Kieran's poster here, yeah. obviously. Big up. 
Uh, an Exodus poster, Hell Cell. Oh, very cool. So you then come into the projection room. Again, this is our ending. How do we create an ending that hasn't got a chainsaw? I know this building, this is a tourist scene known for having a chainsaw yeah. run out for every Fright Night space, but that is Creek's brand. And one thing that we've really worked on over the years uh, for Fright Nights is how do we make all the mazes unique without going, okay, here's six mazes. They all say the same thing at the start. There's someone come in, quick run quick get out at the end yeah. with just a different theme laced over it so what makes them all unique well creek is unique because it has the buck reeds and the chainsaw and if you put that here that kind of took away from it and it also didn't make sense because we didn't have a character that had a chainsaw yeah in, in one of the trailers so this was how can we make a really punchy ending but without having a chainsaw yeah. so <laughs> you come into the projection room and this is where the monsters have escaped really and the projectionist you know was in here working but all the sparks are going off the wires are going crazy you're literally in chaos in here so you've got two things that are your villain here one is your environment and secondly the monsters that have escaped that you think you've left behind in the trailers <laughs> so you might see a clown again you might see a dentist again you might see an inmate again so what's really unique about this is that every time you come through if you come through more than once you'll get a different group different of characters, characters because of the way that they rotate so you'll never see the same three characters in here you'll nice. never see just a clown an inmate and a dentist you might have a dentist and um a dentist and a night terror in here or you know a different mix up every day depending on what rotations and what characters and what time of day you come through so um it's, it's you know it's been great that these have been in here and you come out and you have again a trailer of the trailers yeah. the best bits at the end here so you come around here um just quickly and on this yes. cv i think seb was telling me is that the original like asylum footage yes that there is on there? there is some original footage That's on there cool. so yeah so again another cool. easter egg um this is from angry birds 4d oh so gosh. again um another nod that is um from we've used that from jungle, jungle escape, escape yeah, yeah as another nod to what was in this attraction yeah. um, in this building so yeah um it's been you know it's been great to like see these pieces like have a home again yeah. um but you come around this room and the idea is that you know from what the usher has told you and you'll see if you've been around or through any uh, you know videos or vlogs that the usher is still hypnotized by the cinema or by the you know the surges so they start talking like the voiceover so they're like break your <laughs> brains breeze and they keep like flipping and being hypnotized so you know that they're not the villains they are yeah. part of it as well and that the power surges of what it is the villain that has brought the monsters into the, into the you know to the real world so you come around here and then you have our two sparklers um which go off they're triggered by the actors um at certain points so the groups get to see it every single time so they don't miss them so as soon as they come around the corner they're triggered so they get that scene they get that gag um and right, right in thinking this is the first time four have really done kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. pyrotechnics in yeah, a maze it's the first time so again people in this business are really passionate about this ending and making it really punchy and having sparklers and Katie loves fire and fireworks <laughs> and she was really passionate about getting these. Um, so we went through different endings for this as well. Like, do you have, um, do you have, you know, these sparklers that we have? Do you have loads of monsters in here? Do you have a creepy um, character that chases you out? Is it that the dentist is in here with a drill? We went through so many different versions and I, I'm so pleased we've got the one that we've got because yeah. you generally see people walk and then go like <laughs> this, um, which is great. And it just brings shadows and light and color into this room. And again, everyone's so you know focused on the actors and running away from you know them and the monsters that they suddenly turn around and there's a sparkler going at them. Um, <laughs> So you continue around here. And then again, the old run out to Asylum or Studio 13 as you know, whoever, you know, as you remember it. Um, but there are air cannons in here as well. So as you think you've left, you get that final push, yeah. literally, you know, pushing you out. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the best feelings has been seeing people run out oh, of yeah. this attraction. It's lovely to see yes. it again. Especially in dress rehearsals and seeing that, like, we weren't, we weren't sure how this would be received and that isn't any criticism on anyone, but it's a very unique, different concept. Yeah. It's very different from our, our buckwheats or our ghosts or our um, Saw Alive or our zombies from Walking Dead. So this was amalgamation of everything. It was like a passion project for so many people that, you know, there was 
you know, something for everyone in here, but how would guests who didn't have that passion or have that understanding receive it? So even until dress run, we were still thinking, okay, like, how's this going to work? We're not sure how people are going to receive this. How will that room be received? But actually, like, it's just been incredible to see the reviews and yeah. everyone's worked incredibly hard on this across the board. So the project team, the marketing team, the build and construction team, the performance team have only just started their run in here. They've yeah. had a long week and they're absolutely killing it in here. Um, you know, the people who went out there and made these things happen, such as the sparklers and you guys for coming down and helping be part of that and market that, and, you know, film it and capture the magic on film because it's over like that so quickly. Um, the tech team who, you know, turned this on. So there are so many different people who have been part of making this happen. And I think everyone's just really pleased, beyond pleased with how it's gone. Yeah. Um, and the reviews have been great from people who have, you know, who don't necessarily know our past, but equally the people who do have taken something away oh, yeah. um, and have gone oh I remember that maze <laughs> like even some of our actors when they came through when we tested this came out and was like I love the curse <laughs> curse is great in there so it's been really lovely to, to see you know everyone's labour like you know be be paid off yeah yeah it's why it's why we do it so yeah it's great well, no, you, yeah. should, you should be very proud it's, it's gone down so well yeah and it has it really has like 20 years of fear um, you know and it's you know a brand new attraction in a building that started Fright Night so yeah. like it's kind of got its heritage um, and I feel like the great thing about this maze is um, obviously you could have done an anniversary attraction mm -hmm. but that would have very quickly been outdated next yeah. year with this you can very easily change stuff and add things and yeah you can change rooms you can go okay you know in the future if like you know platform or creep free massacre aren't around anymore then you could go okay well let's make a room about platform yeah. let's make a room about creep freak and you can have such a you know long life like you said for this attraction because you just change your trailers um but the cinema super spark will live on so That's yeah there we so go. you know so yeah thank Great. you so much no, you're welcome. you've done an amazing job kind of in the creation of this maze along with everyone else that you said yeah um and yeah thank you so much for, for showing me around no you're welcome thank you obviously you guys um are now able to book your own tours for this um i know if you do the trailers tour you get your very own uh postcard with um some of the scenes within the maze on that and if you do the creek freak and platform tour you get your very own poster so yeah it's very well worth doing it's just so cool kind of being in here and and seeing it all in person. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. It's been great having you. And thank you, you so around. much. And yeah, thank you all very much for watching. And obviously a massive thank you to Kieran, who's been holding this camera the whole time. His arms must be aching at this point. But yeah, thank you all so much. My name is Jack Tilkstone. Goodbye. Last night we went to Thor Park.